Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of JNAC Ministry Moments. My name is Derek Caples, and I am honored to be here with you tonight. Have you ever lost something and you really wanted to find it? You start tearing the whole house up, you woke the kids up, even had the dog looking for it. You just really wanted to find this thing. But while you were searching for it, you actually found something that you didn't even realize you was looking for. But when you found it, you were so happy about it. So it, you was grateful that you was looking for the other thing, which caused you to find this thing. And it's funny how sometimes it just all sort of works together. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the subject matter of all things work together. Uh, there's a scripture found in Romans 8 and 28, and it says, And we know that all things work together for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. And so for a few moments, I just want to address you with that subject matter. Uh, our text will be found in 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter. As it opens in 1 Samuel, it is talking about Saul. It's talking about the lineage of Saul and how he comes from a strong family and how uh, they're men of power and, and, and they have resources. And so Saul has a pretty good life. The Bible even records that Saul uh, was a good person. He was a good looking man. And so Saul, by all accounts, had it going on and had a pretty decent life. But this story tells us that uh, there came upon a time when uh, some cattle were missing from from Saul's family. And Saul had to go on the search and begin to look for these missing cattle. And so Saul's life right there represents uh, our life and how that we may have a good situation going on. Our family may be intact and our health is OK and 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 our job is intact. And so we're doing pretty good. But it just seems like something is missing. Something uh, should be there that's not. It may be that we're looking for peace. It may be that we feel that God has promised us something more. It may be that the devil has stolen something and we are in search for it and we're looking for it and something is missing. So as we look at Saul and him beginning to search for the missing cattle, for the thing that was missing in his life, we see his journey took him through uh, several different places. In 1 Samuel 9 and 4, it says, And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and he passed through the land of Shalisha, and, he, and they found them not. And then he passed through the land of Shalem, and they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And so we see that, that Saul was going and he was searching different places and he could not find what he was looking for. So for a few moments, I want to just take a, a look at the different places that Saul began to search and see if they correlate with some of the places we search for as we are looking for the thing that, that we are missing in our life. The first place that he came to was Mount Ephraim. Mount Ephraim is translated to mean the place of fruitfulness or productivity or the land of plenty. And this represented the place. It was his go to place. Whenever he had an issue, whenever he had a problem, this was the place that he would go to. This is like when you're going through a situation of trouble, you always call on your mom and them to pray. You know what I mean? Because mom and them can get a prayer through. And so or you turn to your friends and families and those that have helped you in the past. And, you know, they're kind of your go to situation. But just like Saul, sometime even going to our go to situation, we can't find what we really need, the peace, the love or, or whatever it is that we're missing. So the second place that that Saul went to was called Shalissa. This is translated to mean the master of the three gods. And to understand this place, we had to understand that Israel was known for uh, serving one God. Many of the other nations serve multiple gods. And so to Israel, those nations that serve multiple gods was considered worldly or heathen. So this place that Saul went searching is considered to be the worldly system. And sometimes we turn to the world and the mindsets of the world and the thoughts of the world trying to find what we're missing. 
We try to find peace in a world where there is no peace. We try to find love in a world where they don't even understand love. And so sometimes we're searching through the world system and through uh, the world's philosophy. But the Bible records that he did not find what he was missing there. The next town or the next place is called Shalem. And in this place, it is called the land of the foxes. And how many know that the foxes, the, the Bible records that the little foxes spoil the vine. So what this place represents is when you are connecting yourself to the wrong type of people, is when you are, are, are getting involved in different vices and drugs and alcohol and things of that nature. And you're letting those things influence you. Sometimes we are hurting. Sometimes we're going through and we're searching for peace and we're searching for all these things. And so we turn to the wrong things. And so that's what this place where Saul went represented, turning to the wrong thing and those things influencing your life and turning your situation uh, from good to worse. And so the last place that that uh, Saul went was the land of the Benjamites. Now, Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. So this represents when, you know, you feel like I can do it by myself. It represents when you feel like I, I, I can handle any situation that comes. And so we believe that uh, our strength is in our job or in our bank account or in our education. And so we try to, you know, get those things in place. And we believe that if we get those things in place, we're going to feel better about our situation or we're going to be able to find what we've been missing. But the Bible records that Saul did not find what he was missing there either. And so sometimes we spend a lot of time searching places that are not going to cause us to be able to find what we're uh, missing in our life. And so as the Bible records, he came to a place called Zuff. Now, when he reached Zuff, he was about to give up. He had told his servant that was with him, you know what, we just going to stop this search. We just going to go home. But then he realized something. In verse 6, uh, uh, in the same chapter, it tells us, And he said unto him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, and he is honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. So what happened? After he got tired of searching all the places and not finding what he was looking for, he came to a place and said, you know what? It's time to go to church. It's time to seek out the man of God. Let me stop for a station break right here and tell you that what you are looking for and what you need and that thing that you are missing, you're going to find it in your relationship with God. Amen. Preach on preacher. All right. Um, and so what he did is he said, I'm going to go and seek out the man of God. And so he began to go uh, and pursue the man of God and ask, where is the man of God? But while he was searching and looking, something interesting happened that I want to point out in verse uh, 15. Verse 15 says, now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came saying, wait a minute, let's 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 look at this. While Saul was still in his place of searching, while he was still lacking, while he was still confused, while he was still in the midst of his situation, the Lord is already speaking in the ear of the man of God before he gets there. Somebody needs to understand that in this confusing time, in this time of the pandemic, in this time of uncertainty, in this time where you're searching, you need to understand God already has a word that is prepared for you. Not only did he have a word that was prepared for him and that he was speaking in the uh, uh, ear of the man of God, let's look at what he told him. If we continue to read, tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people. Hold on, wait a minute again. 
even while you are still in the midst of your trouble, God is making a plan for your life. God has purpose. God has a reason for you being. So sometimes when we're in the midst of a storm and we can't see outside of our situation, we, we, we lose hope. We lose a uh, 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 belief that good things are going to happen. But I want you to know and understand that God has a plan for you. God is speaking good things into your life. And so uh, um, as we begin to go on, um, we see that as Saul encounters the man of God, verse 20 lets us know that the first thing that the man of God said to Saul was the cattle that you've been looking for has already been found. So what am I trying to say? God has already sent an answer for the thing that is troubling you, the thing that you are looking for, the thing that the devil is trying to get your attention to be focused on so you can't see the goodness of God. The Bible says here that God had already sent an answer for that, that the cattle had already been found. So that lets me know that this journey and him going into a search wasn't even about the cattle. It wasn't even about what he had lost. It was to get him moving towards where God was going to do something awesome in your life. When I talk about the topic of all things working together, I want you to know and understand and realize that even the trouble that you face in is working out for your good. So I don't want you to lose hope and think that what I'm going through is taking me the wrong way. We see here that because Saul went on a search in the first place, it led him to the man of God. There was purpose even in what you're facing right now. So as we look uh, further, we look at verse uh, 21. Now I'm about to get excited in here, y'all. But as we look at verse 21, it says, And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest tribe of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou to me? Saul did what many of us would do. Saul began to look at what he was facing and what he was going through and who he was and his ability and his struggles and begin to say, I know I'm not worthy of, of, of what you're speaking into my life. I know I'm not worthy of, of, of what uh, you're saying to me. And so many times we'll count our own self out. Many times we will uh, disregard ourself uh, and not believe what God has spoken into our life. But I really like what the man of God did. It said in verse 22, and Samuel took Saul his, and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about 30 persons. Now, I want to slow down and I want you to understand what just happened. So while Saul is in his feelings and complaining about what he don't have or what he's not or where he's from or what his shortcomings was, the man of God took him and sat him in the chiefest seats. Now, there was already folk there. There was already folk gathered. So my first question is why nobody else wasn't sitting in that seat. And the reason is what God has for you is for you. So when he took him in, he took him to the chiefest seat, the place that was ordained for him to be. So it doesn't matter if people arrive before you arrive. It doesn't matter if it looks like they're prosperous. It doesn't matter if it looks like they're advancing. When God brings you in to your place, they're going to have to just look at you, pass them by. I can imagine Paul, I mean Saul walking in saying, excuse me, pardon me, I'm on my way to where God has ordained for me to be. Can't nobody sit where you're supposed to sit. And as he took him into the uh, uh, parlor, parlor and verse 23, and Samuel said to the cook, bring the portion which I give thee, of which I said unto thee, set it by thee. Before Saul got there, before he encountered the man of God, God spoke to the man of God and told him about Saul. And then Saul, Samuel turned around and told the cook, set this aside. I need somebody to understand that there are some wonderful things that God has already set aside 
on your behalf. Can't nobody have the stuff that belongs to you. The devil can't have the stuff that belongs to you. I imagine everybody is in the food line and they're trying to get this and they're trying to pick this up, but they're not able to pick up the portion that was set aside for Saul. Somebody needs to be encouraged. God has not forgotten about you. God has not set you to the side, but he has stuff that is reserved for you. He has stuff that can't nobody else touch. And as we go to in, uh, uh, on in this story, we see that the cook said this was left for you. It said that we kept it for you. So I want you to be encouraged that no matter what you're going through in life, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're facing, God's got your back and it is all going to work together for your good. Somebody needs to understand that it says to those that love God. So your mission, your job, your assignment, while you're going through difficult times, while you're facing this pandemic, while you're facing the problems in the economy, while you're dealing with fear of faith and while you're dealing with all of these emotions, your assignment is to love God and to work according to the calling that God has placed on your life. Because if you do that, God is going to realign things. God is going to set things in order. God is going to bring things where it is working on your behalf. I heard it said the devil meant it for bad. The things that you're facing, the issues, the family problems, the devil meant it for bad. But how many know that God is going to turn that test into a testimony. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to just begin to speak to yourself, speak to your spirit and say, it's already working on my behalf. I know what it looks like. I know what they're saying. I know what the report is, but I also know our God and he's able to do anything but fail. So I want to encourage you to keep your mind stayed on what God is doing. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your eyes focused on God and watch what he does. It is my prayer that God will be able to open your eye and for you to see what's going on, for you to be able to see the things that, that God has on your behalf and to know that God's word cannot lie. God bless you. I thank you. Until we meet again, I love you.